so that you know what to expect today, <clears throat> we'll go over how Briarcliff uses um, the Pelvic Mentor Simulator, some of their program insights, how students also learn on standardized patients, challenges they face during the pandemic, clinical hours, and how exams were done in the past <clears throat> versus how they're done today. Um, after that, we'll do a virtual Symbionics Pelvic Mentor demo and have a Q&A session. If you have any questions over the next hour, please feel free to type them in the chat box. Um, and if you would like a, a private demo and, um, or a budgetary quotation, please submit your email address um, in the chat box and we'll get that over to you as well. So I am um, your moderator. My name is Amy Cafenteris. Many of you know me um, by my old name, which was uh, old last name, which was Natsis. But uh, since the pandemic put a hard stop on my work travel, I actually had time to get married. So. Um, I've been selling Symbionics products since 2009, and my colleague um, who will be doing the live demo for us from his home in Denver is Guy Benisti, and he's been with the company since the year 2000. So we're honored um, to welcome the director of Briarcliff Graduate Nursing Program, the director, uh, Dr. Gretchen Wheeler, and her colleague and assistant professor, Dr. Heather Steer. So I'll turn this over to Dr. Wheeler. Great, thank you, Amy. Um, as Amy had mentioned, I am the Graduate Nursing Program Director at Briarcliff University. And I have been at the university for 11 years now as a faculty member and then the program director for the last three years. Um, our university, this is kind of an aerial view of our university and parts of our university. We are a very small Catholic Franciscan liberal arts university. Um, and we actually sit on top of a, a hill here in our city and you can see for miles and miles. So while this view is, is quite lovely of our aerial uh, of our campus, the view um, on our campus out into the community is much better. Um, just to give you a little bit of an oversight of our university, just so that you can kind of put your university um, into maybe our shoes or you can compare our university with your university or how you might end up utilizing um, the pelvic mentor in your facility. Um, we were um, started in 1930 as an all women's college. And so there was actually quite a bit of a focus on women's um, education when we first started off in our university. And it wasn't until 1965 that we started to allow men into our university. And um, our BSN program actually wasn't around right away. It didn't um, come into fruition until um, uh, this reinstated into the 1980s. And then from there, we've kind of morphed it into an um, advanced practice degree and graduate programs into our nursing program. Um, in our university, we do have uh, 30 different fields of study uh, within our bachelor's program. And then we also have graduate programs. Um, including our Master's of Science in Nursing. We have a DPT program uh, um, that just recently started in the last five years. And then pretty soon we're gonna have a Doctor of Occupational Therapy program that's gonna be starting in our university as well. And um, my peer, uh, Dr. Heather Steer, will be kind of talking about how not only does the nursing program utilize this um, technology, but other programs on campus do as well. And so one of the reasons why I'm actually telling you about all of our um, university and that we're small and how we started was because um, we do have a, a pretty good um, student to faculty ratio, which is a 14 to one. And our graduate programs for nursing are, are some of our bigger programs. So our programs, um, and we'll talk about um, our admissions and, and our class sizes, they're, they're a little bit bigger compared to the other programs um, here at Briarcliff. But what we do is we do have limited resources here on our campus. Um, we do have a very small simulation lab. And so I don't want um, you to think that this is only for people that have a lot of money, and <laughs> a lot of resources, because we definitely don't have those things here at Briarcliff, but we do have the pelvic mentor simulation. And it's been a valuable piece of, uh, piece of education for our students and particularly for our graduate education. Um, so one of the ways that we um, 
decided to uh, pursue this pelvic mentor was through the use of our university relations and asking for a private donor to fund the equipment. And since we have purchased the, um, the model, there has been new upgrades to the technology. And so we're in transition and figuring out how to use our lab budget to uh, purchase then the speculum and the PAP testing that you'll be seeing here today. Next slide. So we are an accredited program. Um, we do have a traditional BSN face-to-face -face upper division um, course that meets here on campus. And that is within a two-year program or four semesters. We also have an RN to BSN online program. Um, additionally, we have a <clears throat> traditional MSN program uh, that is for nurse practitioners, and we do adult, adult gero primary care. We also do family nurse practitioner, which is our largest program. And then we just started in 2019 the psych mental health NP program. And so that's going really well for us as starting that program. Um, we are a completely online program program with exception of two short summer on-site required days. And those on-site required days is when we utilize the pelvic mentor for our health assessment classes. And I'll talk about that here a little bit more in the next slide. And then what I also want to kind of mention is that we do have a DMP program. And we used to have a BSN to DMP program. Um, but we um, ended up having a lot of competition with an MSN program that started in our area. And so we were kind of forced to go back to the traditional MSN program. So our DMP program right now is for postgraduate students that are nurse, already nurse practitioners that wanted to come back and get that doctoral degree. Next slide. So with this, um, Our program is considered to be a part-time program. Um, we usually have our students in five to eight credits, depending on the semester over a three-year program. The reason why we do this is so that a lot of our, a lot of our students here um, at Barcliff need to maintain either part-time or full-time work status. And then they also have their home life. So we found out that a part-time program is really best for us and for, for our students. Um, as mentioned in the last slide, we do have a two-day health assessment within the first summer of our program. So our students will typically be in a fall summer course, or excuse me, fall and spring course. And then um, that's where they're getting their advanced pathophysiology, their, their health promotion, and their advanced pharmacology classes. And then we feel like they're ready for that advanced physical skills assessment. And so what we do is we bring them on campus and right now we're bringing them on campus for two full days. Um, even if they're all the way on the East Coast or the West Coast, they, they are required to fly in um, and come to the Sioux City campus. And what we do is we do the advanced health assessment skills so that we can see those skills. Uh, and then we also do the pelvic models. Um, and then in the second year, we are bringing our students back in the second year summer to complete all of their advanced skills, such as the suturing, splinting, corneal abrasions. Um, we also will be doing some OSCEs with our students um, to revisit because now they've actually in their second summer have been in a, a little bit of clinical. So we can kind of start seeing, okay, how are they progressing? Are they doing well within that 120, 180 hours? of clinical at that point in time. And it's at that point in time that we can revisit the pelvic mentor if the students are in need of some fine tuning with their skills. So the students, our particular online students, have the opportunity at least twice to utilize the pelvic mentor if they so choose. And then if they're close to campus, they could also come to campus, make appointments and, and utilize that more often as well. Um, we do require our psychiatric mental health nurse practitioners to complete the advanced physical assessment, which includes the pelvic models and the pelvic mentor, but we do not require them to utilize the advanced skills lab. That's more of an optional lab because that's the suturing, splinting, casting, that sort of thing. Um, and then our DMP program, again, that was the post-master's um, program that our nurse practitioners are ready. 
that's also a two-year part-time program um, in at Briarcliff University. And we don't require any of those students to come to campus at all. Next slide. So one of the things that I will just mention here about this slide is that cute little young gentleman on the exam table is my son and he's 10 now. So he definitely doesn't look like that anymore. And I'm on the left uh, and I have short hair there. So um, had, to, had to put a plug in there for that, that um, picture. Um, with the use of standardized patients, um, just to kind of explain um, where we were at at one point, where we're kind of at now, um, back in the day, we only utilized non-live model mannequins. So these were the stiff mannequins that had a cervix and that was about it. <laughs> um, so our students really didn't know a lot about the anatomy at that point in time. Um, they could use a speculum, but that, that was really about it. And then from there, we've kind of morphed into, we, we had hired an outside company to come in and to provide the skills lab. And when they came in with the skills lab, they brought in those non-live dull mannequin, mannequins along with live pelvic models. And um, the thing about that is that they kind of were really rushed all the time. And then the, we never knew who the instructors were that were coming until the last minute. And so sometimes we get the best instructors that would come and then sometimes we just got the ones that were left over. And then when they were here for a short bit, then they were gone. And so if anyone had any questions, um, it was difficult to ask them that, those questions. So then we moved the skills back to Briarcliff because we had an expansion of our NP faculty. And that's when um, we kind of started thinking about, okay, well, we're looking at the Typhon log. So that's how we, um, Typhon is what we use for our clinical tracking systems. And sometimes we were seeing in our procedures that students were only getting like one, maybe two, if we were lucky, three pelvic assessments on live patients um, at the end of their schooling. And we just felt like that was not enough. And it, again, it really depended on the clinical setting that they were in, if they ever went to a women's health um, uh, rotation. Um, so clearly some of them had more, but then other people had less. And some of our timid students really had less because they always seemed to observe when they were in clinical at that, at that point in time. And so that's where we decided to start looking into the expansion of the live um, pelvic mentor. Um, and we utilized that as an additional um, assessment and simulation tool for our students. Um, one of the things that um, we wanted to kind of point out was that while there's the cost of the technology and the simulation and the, and the uh, machinery that you get from the pelvic mentor, we were spending at least $35 per assessment per student on the live models. And so the students got to go in, they got to do one assessment with the speculum, one bimanual assessment, and then that was it. That, that was all they got to do. Um, and so they would, they would do that on a female patient. And then we also had a male live model that were, they were paid live models that um, were trained. Um, so now we're already at $70 plus we're paying for their travel and we're paying for their lodging and we're paying for their food. Um, so really we couldn't, we couldn't ask our students to pay more money. The university couldn't absorb more assessments. And so that's where we came up with the additional pelvic mentor as a second simulation um, and an enhanced simulation to these live models that we also still bring to campus. Now, all, as all of you um, are aware, the COVID-19 pandemic caused some challenges uh, with clinical sites. And so there was uh, clinical site limitations, there were um, shutdowns within clinicals, um, we actually had the inability, the, the university did not allow us to have any live labs with our students. And so we had to revamp everything and kind of reinvent the wheel and do all of our, our labs and skills uh, for health assessment this past summer virtually. And that posed a lot of challenges. Um, we weren't able to do the hands-on live pelvic mentor or our pelvic models uh, this summer. But we do have plans to do it this next summer 
with the group. And so we'll actually end up having two cohorts worth of students in our health assessment labs um, this, coming, this coming summer. Next slide. So with our clinical hours, um, we do have a clinical coordinator. Uh, the clinical faculty work with the clinical coordinator to help vet our preceptors and really establish our contracts and get our students in the preceptored sites that they need to be in. Um, we do additionally have a very strong relationship with Siouxland Community Health Center that is in Sioux City, Iowa. And Dr. Heather Stu, who, who will be talking next, um, actually works full time for this organization and then she works part time as a faculty member for Briarcliff. And so we're really fortunate to have that strong relationship with our clinical sites. Um, one of the nice things about, well, not one, but one of the very many <laughs> nice things about uh, our partnership with Siouxland Community Health Center is that they didn't stop our student preceptorships um, when the COVID pandemic and all the shutdowns and everything were happening at the very beginning, um, back in March, April, May, June. Um, and so they still allowed our students to be there. And so as we all know, there is that minimum 500 hours that are required for nurse practitioner students in particular through the certifying bodies um, that they need to be one-on-one -on -one with a preceptor in the clinical setting, seeing live patients and, and doing hands-on clinical experiences. And so um, several of our students had to finish those minimum of 500 hours with Dr. Steer in her clinic. And they certainly got a lot of experience with COVID-19, um, that's for sure. But then we kind of had these students that were lingering here like, Oh, they almost got to our 600 clinical hours that we were requiring, but they didn't quite do that. So that's where we fell back on the experiences that they had with the pelvic mentor, with the pelvic models, and in our health assessment classes. We do, in addition, utilize um, another online si virtual simulation software for health assessment. So we were able to utilize some of those hours as well to kind of fill the gap between the 500 and five, uh, 540 or the 600, depending on where the students were at with their clinical process. So um, now you know a little bit about our program um, and um, some, of, some of the background before we kind of get into this um, pelvic mentor. So Dr. Heather Steer is a DMP and FMP, and she's a full-time clinician at Siouxland Community Health and part-time faculty member at Briar Cliff. And Dr. Steer is our guru on our faculty for all of our pelvic mentor simulation scenarios and um, the use in the training. The nice thing about having one person that's trained on this is because she really kind of uh, holds that as their, as maintains the equipment, there's less um, hands on the equipment. And so we really haven't had any broken pieces or missing parts. Um, and so she almost utilizes that as like another second part-time job <laughs> with her role to be the faculty trainer. And um, she also is a, one of our leads for our skills lab and our simulation. So I will turn this over to Dr. Steer. Okay, well, thank you for that warm introduction, Dr. Wheelock. Um, so essentially the pelvic mentor enhances the training experience for students, you know, future healthcare providers, whether they're nurse practitioners, physicians, um, physician assistants, the one skill that is hard to teach in that um, advanced assessment setting is the pelvic exam. And what one skill do healthcare providers utilize the most besides, you know, your basic physical exam is that pelvic exam. And it's so hard to reproduce the skill for students um, in, from the learning aspect. And it can be one of the most um, nerve wracking um, experiences in the clinical setting, especially when students aren't prepared for it. 
Um, we have had, you know, experiences, especially with COVID, you know, not only our students, um, I did preceptor student from a neighboring university, and nobody had had the basics of a pelvic exam because nobody could have, you know, the actual skills labs. So I could see the difference of when students come in, you know, with this experience versus not. Um, so they did um, struggle a little bit, especially without, you know, the hands on learning experience. But basically, you know, pelvic exams on the pelvic mentor provides learners with a simulation substitute for pelvic exams and these are real lifelike simulations and um, students are able to practice on the simulator which like I said patient lifelike but yet also get feedback from you know the monitor screen as to even what anatomical structures they're near or you know their technique itself with having the oversight of in our case you know a nurse practitioner teaching the actual technique. So uh, at Briarcliff, we do group and individual instruction of skill um, and procedure itself. Um, students are able, like I said, to gain that confidence on the system before um, patient actual hands-on experience. Because like I said, it is one of those skills that students do step back from the most if they have the opportunity. Um, so that's why we like to get them that experience before they get into the clinical setting so they feel more confident about their ability to perform an actual pelvic exam. They're able to practice on various pathologies. So the pelvic mentor comes with different uteri. Um, basically you have your uh, woman who's never had a baby Okay, um, you have your female who has had um, children before, there's also fibroids, there's um, uterine cysts, there's all, or I mean ovarian cysts, there's all sorts of uteri that, pay, that students are able to practice on um, so that they can not only observe the differences in the cervix, but then also feel the differences. Um, so pelvic exam education, um, Dr. Wheelock kind of went over how it was taught in the past. Um, and we had decided to, uh, like she said, take back that hands-on approach to teaching skills to our students. And um, at that time, Dr. Susan Beiler was our department chair and um, she had, I believe, received an email about this, but or seen it at a conference and was very passionate about um, our department obtaining this piece of equipment so that we were able to teach our students. And so, you know, in partnership with her, this all came to life for us. So students um, do actually view a voiceover PowerPoint about the uh, female genitalia before they come to the skills lab. And this is uploaded to our learning management system. They can go back and view it if they need to, but this is used in conjunction with the pelvic mentor so that they can come in, they can learn the correct technique after they've learned it um, on the voiceover PowerPoint and then um, move forward with actually adapting that skill. Okay, next slide. So uh, anatomical recognition, the actual pelvic mentor does come with a little bit of educational software that we run our students through at first. Um, basically, they learn the anatomy all over again, because, you know, learning the anatomy in a textbook is a little bit different than learning the anatomy hands on. Okay, so students are able, um, you know, within the health assessment that they actually learn the anatomy. Okay, and then the anatomical recognition um, or learning modules within this, um, the software for the pelvic mentor itself. Um, and realistically, okay, this is pretty hands on. As you can see, this is a picture of our cart that we have at Briarcliff. Um, Dr. Beidler's husband did create this for us. Um, and it adequately displays both, you know, the pelvic mentor itself and the monitor screen, which is at eye level for students. Um, the bottom level um, contains the finger sensors, which Guy is going to talk about next. Um, However, it's great for hands-on anatomy recognition, proper identification um, during palpation, but also for students to learn that technique, to learn what um, you know, feels right for the actual pelvic exam and to learn the difference between the different um, uteri or different abnormalities they may find on a pelvic exam. Okay, next slide. So enhancing the training experience, um, like we said before, they're able to recognize normal and abnormal. You can see across the bottom of the slider the different uteri that come with um, the actual pelvic mentor. So it gives you a variety of virtual patients. So 
this can be an anatomical recognition mode. They can be learning the hands-on um, technique itself, or you can actually put students through an exam and they can go in and have to blindly, they don't know what you derive in the pelvic mentor and they can have to identify, you know, what it is. Maybe it's an ovarian cyst, but they have to first, of course, learn the correct technique and then be able to apply that technique to determine what's abnormal. So the more they are able to practice this and learn this, the more confident they're going to be about their skills in the actual clinical setting. Okay, so like we talked about the anatomical customization, but also that dynamic anatomical atlas. So um, the finger sensors uh, do provide students with um, basically feedback as to, you know, what anatomical location or where they're at, but then also the instructor is able to scroll over the anatomical landmarks you can see here on the left hand side where you can see the picture of the pelvis, and it will label those landmarks for students if they're struggling. Um, so it gives lots of great feedback. Like I said, there's learning modes, there's test modes, and students are able to really get that good grasp of the pelvic exam, normals and abnormals. Okay. And next slide. So as we talked about before, provides learners with simulation substitute for pelvic exams. Um, as Dr. Wheelock had highlighted, um, we also do have a DNP or a DPT, sorry, program at Briarcliff University. And as part of their optional learning, students can take a pelvic wall course. Um, and this is a certification that they can have, you know, as a DPT. Um, and what they do is they learn the basics of the pelvic wall. Um, and basically the modality is strengthening therapy for that. However, they bring me in for two days and um, I do teach, you know, the correct pelvic exam. We learn about all the anatomy and then we use the pelvic mentor. So for the last couple of years, we have done this um, hands-on and the DPT students love it because they're able to once again, practice on this simulator, which is very lifelike. So they're confident that they know what they're feeling for, what they're doing when they are actually in that um, clinical setting, having to do the exam themselves. So um, okay, so we do ours, both group and individual instruction. Um, students are able to contact me to set up a time to come up to campus to review this. Um, recently, it hasn't been happening because of COVID, but in the past, it has. Um, and the confidence that these students gain is invaluable. I mean, it will take them far into their clinical setting. So they're able to do this correct exam, less burden on your preceptors. They don't have to spend as much time educating um, and they can learn the various pathologies. What's normal, what's abnormal? How do I feel the difference between the two? Um, so that they're able to make that correct um, differential diagnosis. Um, confidence evaluation based on meaningful performance metrics. I know Guy will go into a little bit more in depth on this, but it does give students feedback. Um, and it gives students feedback as far as um, their performance, their ability to identify anatomy, um, their actual technique itself. Um, and then curriculum videos are provided for online learning and self-instruction. Like I said, we utilize those through our um, LMS basic anatomy physiology um, and then a little extra for the pelvic exam but like I said totally different learning from a recorded PowerPoint or a textbook versus your hands-on simulator such as the pelvic mentor. Okay next slide. Okay, so next up, I think Guy's getting ready to do his demo, but um, we're going to look at the pelvic mentor in use, um, including the new speculum exam and pap test capabilities. Totally excited about this. We do not have this, but as Dr. Wheelock had mentioned, we are working towards obtaining this um, with our administration um, because, you know, students do learn that step by step for pap tests on the various different um, cervix um, and then they're able to really, like again, strengthen their technique and their ability to perform this in the clinical setting. And then that'll transfer later um, into their practice. So this is an exciting add-on, just literally came out within the last couple of months for the company. And it will only strengthen the pelvic mentor and your students' learning abilities. So next up, we're going to see Guy perform a demonstration. Thank you very much, Dr. Steer. Let me just, okay. I hope everybody can see the, the video with my hands. Um, as Amy mentioned, my name is Guy. I've been working uh, for 20 years in this company and I absolutely, a huge fan of medical simulation and see a very important role of simulation um, in, in, in medical education in the future. Um, as Dr. Steer uh, mentioned, 
the pelvic mentor is a great substitute, of course, for standardized patients and other means of training. So basically the I, secret- May I interrupt you for one minute because somebody messaged they cannot see. So if everyone turns their video off, it should highlight Guy. And then we should, everyone should be able to see. Let me see if I can pin the video. Is that better? Yeah, or if you go to the um, top right of your screen, or of your screen, um, Kathleen, there should be a little icon that says view. If you click on that and select speaker view, um, you should be able to see him. So it's not the best angle, but this is the most important part of the simulator. This is actually a palpable mannequin, uh, which consists a lot of the structures inside uh, that uh, we work with doctors, with quite a few doctors. Uh, and nurses on developing a mannequin that it is as close as possible to reality in terms of feel. And um, other than the palpable mannequin, we are actually using uh, finger sensors. So I'm going to place the finger sensors when I start uh, the simulation right like this on my fingers and then I can put a glove or put the cards that I have with the simulator uh, and my virtual fingers are going to physically palpate the mannequin and there's another box here which connects everything together and that turns the physical into the virtual you're going to see on the screen in a minute. Other than that, as you can actually see here, we do offer quite a wide range of abnormal uteri, uh, including different services. Uh, and basically, uh, when you do the pelvic examination, the faculty can actually change the physical uh, uterus inside the mannequin. Um, and then by hopefully following, uh, you know, their standardized pelvic exam, exam uh, protocols, they will be able to identify uh, what the problem is. Um, as Dr. Steer mentioned, we do have a brand new uh, module, which is very exciting. This is actually the pup test uh, tool, okay? This one is actually equipped with uh, a cyto brush. We can just take it off and change it very, very easily uh, with a cervical broom, okay? And each one of these tools uh, actually has a different case so you can actually focus the technique uh, practice the techniques of using either one of those and of course um, our latest piece of hardware is also a speculum so this is a well shelling speculum okay which is obviously equipped with a light source that you see inside and then it equipped um, it's actually equipped with a couple of sensor one which actually allows you to angular open the, the, the speculum and the other one allows you to vertically open it. Everything that you see physically, you will see virtually in a minute on the screen. So let me share my screen here. I hope everybody can see both my camera and also the login screen for the mentor learn. If you don't, please let me know. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to log into the simulator, which can be accessed remotely as well. And obviously nowadays, this is a huge advantage of the simulator where faculty and trainees can actually log into the simulator remotely and actually go over a lot of the didactics and a lot of the, the materials uh, that we actually have on the simulator. And then when they're done, they can come to the simulator and then, um... okay, so, me. So we're just logging in. Everyone, faculty and trainees, will have personal credentials to log into the simulator, and everybody will have uh, different privileges, of course, depending on their level. As um, Dr. Steer and Dr. Willock mentioned, we actually have three different training modules on the simulator. The first one is an anatomical recognition. The second one is a pelvic examination, and the last one is the speculum uh, test. Now. We can do a biomanual examination. If you look at this small screen with my camera, you can see that I actually put both finger sensors on my right hand on the index and middle finger. Um, I can easily use three sensors to do pelvic examination. And I'm gonna place the cot right over uh, the sensor in my finger. So this kind of simulates, um, it is the same, it's actually, fizz. it is a glove, but it's only the fingers. So you can actually use real gloves no lubricants, no, none of that stuff. And now I'm actually selecting, I'm gonna show you the latest module and I can explain through that module the other ones as well. So as I mentioned, we have the cervical broom case, we have the cyber brush, and then we have a test. So in the practice cases, the skin is transparent so they can actually see what they're touching and we allow them to use a variety of different educational features. 
whereas the test is a full skin uh, mode and I will show you that in a second. So let me see if everything is loading, okay. One second, I know you're seeing a blank screen. Just give me a second, it's loading the case. Okay. So I have to reload the case. I'm going with a cyto brush. Okay, everybody can see that screen. We actually start every single case with a calibration screen that actually makes it a little bit easier and eliminates a lot of technicalities uh, when you're dealing with such a high fidelity simulator. So basically I'm gonna take my fingers, I'm gonna place them right on the table or on the tray right next to the mannequin. I'm gonna press the foot switch, which I have here to confirm my selection. That makes life a little bit easier. Um, and then I have to calibrate the speculum simply by facing the blades down and putting it on the table, press it, and I'm gonna keep the recognized uterus. So this is the main screen of the simulator and as Dr. Steer, Dr. Widow mentioned, we do have the capacity to actually run a full anatomical recognition, which is actually very, very detailed. Um, as you can see here, Dr. Steer just mentioned it, there is a whole list of about 34 different structures that we are able to identify. And as you can see, as soon as you touch one, it actually lights it up, okay? So if I take the skin off, for instance, you can take the bones off, you can take the muscles off um, and focus on specific. And when you actually go and over, over specific uh, uh, structures, they will highlight in green. Another very nice feature that we have is actually the ability to change the camera orientation, which kind of allows you um, sometimes, you know, to focus on certain things if you want. So you can actually take everything out and then put it back in and we can reset everything to go back into normal. So this is uh, the transparent mode. Another very nice feature which we actually have is uh, anatomical labeling. One second. So the automatic labeling, especially if uh, the trainees are still at, a, at an early stage, you can simply by hovering over something or even touching with my finger sensors, you can actually get, you see, um, you can actually get an automatic labeling of the organs that you are palpating. Other than that, let's see what else we have here. So this actually, this case is uh, done by a step-by-step. -step. So basically, I'm gonna reset everything. Ensure that the speculum is in its most close position. So what I'm actually doing now, if you look at the camera, I'm just making sure that very gently, my speculum is completely closed and press the foot switch to confirm the first step. Second of all, with the index and the middle finger. So I'm gonna take my two fingers and have the sensors on them and very, very gently, I'm gonna pull down on the vaginal orifice, okay? Just to allow me a little bit more space to insert the speculum. And as you will see in the camera, my fingers virtually and physically are almost in the same position. Next, place the blade tips against the lower posterior wall of the vagina. So I'm just gonna, supposed to do it in a little bit of an angle and then release the finger, rotate, slowly in surface speculum, maintaining a gentle downwards position to avoid trauma to the urethra and vaginal walls. Insert the speculum at the anatomical angle of the vagina and then at this point, moving on for the next one, I'm gonna open the speculum very, very gently. Okay, and now my speculum is open. I need to assess the following features of the cervix, uh, which as you can see, the color, position, size, shape of the OS surface and secretions. Then when I'm done with that, 
I'm going to take the cycle brush, which you see on the camera, and very, very gently, I'm going to insert that. And as the instructions mention, I need to do, from what I learned anyway, a quarter of a turn from 12 to 3. So hopefully, as you can actually see, you're seeing right what I'm seeing on the side of the mannequin. So I'm going to half quarter of a turn, and this should actually suffice. Take it very gently outside as to not contaminate the sample. Remove the side of brush, being very careful. Release the speculum. So right now I'm just going to take it out and then very gently rotate it and take it out. Okay. Rotate the speculum at 45 degrees, which is what I did, and then I am done. So the next stage of the simulator, other than the ability to do anatomical recognition and pelvic examination, uh, as, as both of my colleagues mentioned before, um, another extremely important part of the simulation in my eyes is the performance matrix or the analysis. Now, nobody, to the best of my knowledge, actually set up standards on how to do this type of examination. So as you can see on the screen, we provide you with a lot of technical and objective information that allows you to make the decision whether or not this was a good performance. So starting off the global scores, we're talking about time-wise. So this is uh, how much my examination took. Uh, speculation angle was 29 degrees. I could probably uh, rotate it a little bit better. But just so you understand the details that the simulator actually takes uh, uh, monitors. Number of speculum retrievals, only one, which is good. Side brush number of rolls, a quarter, which is perfect. Pop test was collected, yes, but I did hurt the patient. I should have been a little bit more gentle, whether it's with pulling the vaginal orifice or whether it's actually uh, handling uh, the speculum a little bit more gently, because this is the maximum. So basically, I did cause. Now, would you accept it or not accept it? We actually leave it up to you to judge whether or not um, you accept this uh, as a good performance analysis. This performance report comes immediately after a case and thus allowed a trainee, first of all, to see exactly what he did and how he did. And of course, it allows the faculty to later monitor the case, um, the performance of a specific student or the entire groups. You can maintain as many reports as you want per student. There's really no limitations or we never actually reached that limitation. Um, so you can actually see right now I'm logged in as the administrator, but there is a whole list of performance analysis that can be saved and monitored uh, for the students. And this is it. If anybody has any questions, feel free to use the chat box. This is, of course, everything in a nutshell um, because of the time limitation. Uh, but please let us know if you have any other questions. Amy? Thanks, Kai. Sure. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about <clears throat> um, MentorLearn. It's our um, simulation management system. And um, briefly, it's we have an offline and a cloud-based system. And if you have a cloud, it will store all your information and you can remotely access the simulator. I do, since we're running out of time, want to get to the questions because we had um, many questions come through. So um, Darcy asked if the instructor, um, can the instructor monitor what is going on while the student is doing the internal exam on the video screen? Um, Dr. Beadler, I saw, thank you for answering, um, but the answer is yes. Um, you can see um, because there's a skin on and skin off mode. So with the skin off, you can rotate the anatomical virtual model and peel back um, anatomy as well, and you'll see exactly where um, their fingers on are on. If you are in test mode, then the skin is on and you won't see it, but yes, you can. Um, the next question is, um, there's a curious to how to, how much extra would our university have to pay for pap brush and speculum? Will our pel pelvic mentor work with this new equipment? Um, the answer is yes, it will work with the equipment you have. And I will be sure to get the rep in touch with you to see the optional add-ons that are available for you. Um, and uh, same thing for Ron Streetman. I saw, hi, Ron. Um, the 
you said we have model versions, but without them. If you have the pelvic mentor, then yes, we can add it on. If it's um, a model that is not the pelvic mentor, then our software will not work with your uh, basic model, if that answers it, but we can talk more later as well. Um, there's another question, does the simulator have force feedback? Um, yes, because you're physically touching the simulator. From what I understand, um, the people that own the pelvic mentor said it's very realistic for a simulator. Um, but we would happy, be happy to set up a demo for you and you could get your hands on it as well. Just put it in the chat, request a demo. Um, we'll get you over to the rep for that territory. Um, next question was, do you have to keep pushing the foot pedal for each new motion to get feedback? So in the step-by-step, -step, which is what Guy was doing, that teaches the students. So they have to acknowledge, it's like hinter, hitting enter on a keyboard. You have to acknowledge that you're doing or have completed that step. And then the simulator knows if you did or didn't and will let you move on if you did it properly. Um, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, next question is, can this simulation create trauma to be used to train sexual assault nurse examiners? Um, I did have a SANE nurse, I believe it's called SANE, S-A-N-E, reach out to me regarding this, and they are very excited to use it in their program. Um, so creating trauma, I don't know. Um, we probably have to discuss that a little bit more, but again, I did have a SANE customer um, interest in the simulator, so they were gonna use it. Um, the next one is, does the pelvic mentor have a mechanism to show different types of prolapse? Um, I don't think so, um, but I'd have to put you in touch with your rep to confirm because I don't want to speak um, incorrectly on that. So I'm going to go back to the chat. Looks like there are some more questions or just requests for quotes and emails. Uh, can you insert an IUD? Um, yes, you can. In the normal uterus, um, there's openings, so you can do that. It won't show up on the video screen, um, but you can obviously check your work um, to see if you did it properly by removing the uterus itself. Um, can you demonstrate a bimanual exam? Yes. Um, that would be the in the anatomical recognition, then you go to the pelvic exam module. So that's where you would do the bimanual exam. Um, thanks for the demo, you're welcome. <laughs> um, it looks like, can you demonstrate a bimanual exam with a simulator? So I think we're running out of time, otherwise Guy could do it, but Dr. Goldfarb, we can set up um, a virtual demo or an on-site demo for you. We'll make a note of that. Um, Any other questions? Looks like the rest are just for quotes for <clears throat> requests for quotes and demos. Anyone else? Can you use this in conjunction with an SP? Please let me know what an SP is. Standardized patient. Well, oh, so that would be a question for Heather or Dr. Wheelock. Um, are you guys using it? You use the pelvic mentor, then you use a standardized patient, correct? Yep, that is correct. Um, we have actually used this for competency based evaluations of um, students who had some clinical concerns that um, in conjunction with Dr. Beidler and I, she put together, you know, case study scenarios, that kind of stuff. So we actually made like a case scenario and then use this for hands on assessment. But yes, in the skills days, um, we do actually use this in conjunction with actual live um, pelvic models or standardized patients. Great. I, would, Thank you, Dr. I would also add that one of the things that we can't use for our paid live models is the, um, the brushes, so the tools. So they are using the speculum and they're able to do the bimanual, but that's where it's really nice for the students to get all the pieces together with the addition of the ability to, to sample specimens um, with the new upgrades of the mentor.
Um, Dr. Wheelock or Heather, Dr. Um, Steer, sorry. Does it help students locate the cervix? Can you speak to that? I can speak to that. I'm not sure where Heather's at. Um, and yes, it does help the students locate the cervix. And we have all the different uteri that you can then attach. And like um, Heather had mentioned, she doesn't, she kind of hides those and she doesn't let the students see what they're, what she's actually putting in the box um, for the different anatomical um, recognition. And then she has the students actually try to guess and to figure out, you know, which, which position is the cervix and the, um, you know, the, the um, it, are they feeling any of the tumors or is it antiverted, retroverted? Um, so they are able to really kind of see abnormal, which all of our mannequins and models are usually normal. And I think that that's where the students really have a hard time figuring out the difference between, okay, this is what I'm feeling, but I, I really don't know if it's abnormal or not because they hadn't felt or seen an abnormal before. So the thing that we really like about the pelvic mentor is that it gives you plenty of abnormal case scenarios. Hopefully that answers the question. Thank I you. apologize. I had to step out for a clinical question, but um, what was the question? It was in regards to the uh, students' experience locating the cervix. Ah, yep. Yep, Dr. Wheelock answered that. Okay, great. Yep. Another question, is there a haptic feedback on the finger sensor, hard fibroid or soft cyst? So haptic feedback, yeah, yeah because you're touching it and the, the fingertip, that is, the sensor's on top of your fingernail. So the underneath of your fingertip, you feel everything. So, and you can wear gloves if you'd like. You don't, you can or cannot, you can use the finger cuts. Um, so it does have haptic feedback in this. The ovarian cyst, um, Dr. Steer, correct me if I'm wrong, would you say is um, soft? Um, it's fairly firm. Um, it's pretty typical of an ovarian cyst. I mean, size-wise and actual, how you feel it based on an actual physical examination. So the different uteri we have with the pathology, um, we did work very hard on it. That's the feedback we get that we did a pretty good job. Yeah, it's we pretty spot on, yeah. Okay, good. Any other questions? Well, we'd like to thank everyone um, for attending. And um, I saw in the chat, Olivia pasted a link. So if you'd like to go back and rewatch it, you can. You're welcome, everyone. Everyone's sending thank yous. <laughs> so um, I will repaste the link right now. We wanna um, especially thank Dr. Wheelock and Dr. Steer um, for all their you know, information and knowledge about the system and how they use it and helping others who have it use it. Um, so thank you both very, very much. We appreciate it. And I just reposted the link for you, Amy, as well. Oh, great, okay. I was looking forward to it and I, then I did it. <laughs> Okay, I think that's about it. Thanks again, Dr. Wheelock. Thanks, Dr. Steer. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dr. Wheeler, for your help in answering the questions as well. <laughs> oh, you did that in the chat. That was sweet. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.